in Virtuos Lab is re strictly related to that what Lightman is doing. Actually, I'm working on the Scala IDE. So if you have a problem with plugin on Eclipse, it is more or less my fault <laughs> and my friends uh, who are helping me in this uh, very important work. And now we are also working as a team. I mean, uh, Simon Schaeffer, who is living in Germany, and I, we are working together uh, for uh, Eugene Yokota. You probably know him, at least from, um, let's say, hearing. Eugene is responsible for SBT, so now we are working also on SBT, and uh, we are trying to utilize the next IDE, which is called VS Code, uh, for Scala programmers. So now, we are introducing first features like uh, um, code navigation, yes. Or also, we want to switch on such sophisticated thing like semantic database. So, so thing which is this time Eugene, uh, Eugene Burmako is working on. Uh, and this presentation also fought as a, uh, because SBT itself is a kind of, as, as a, it's a state monad, a kind of state monad. So this uh, talk is also uh, thought more or less as a, a kind of a bite to, for you to start looking into the code of SBT and allows us to add some features. Uh, yeah, also related to v as, uh, VS Code. Uh, yeah, okay, so. How many of you maybe at the very beginning knows what the monad is, and, but in functional world? I don't want to, let's say, talk. I'll ask you about the monad as a structure that you see at the trade, yes? The monad is not the trade, actually. The trade is only an implementation, how we uh, can uh, build a monad in, uh, in Scala, in languages like Scala. But how many of you thought about, for example, something like that? I will write it down. Let's say it, this kind of function, yes? This kind of function can be monadic or not? You think so? So this is, this is nullary function, yes, nullary function. We can think also about that as, an, as, a, as a something when we can apply or construct the functor on monad on it. So if not, that's very good. I mean, in that, in that meaning it's very good that there's not, you probably don't waste your time listening to that. Let me first define the problem. So our problem is, is that we have some function which is taking some argument of some type and inside that Yes, inside that we are, oh, excuse me, this is I not V. Yeah, so inside that we have some side effect. Yes, this is our problem. This function is fully correct. Yes, we are writing this function very often. Of course, uh, we are not using print line here. We are using something like log or, or more like this sort of stuff. Yes, but from the functional point of view, this is incorrect in some sense, yes, because in functions, what we can do in functions, in functions we can, uh, the first thing is, is that uh, we would like to have function which is, uh, it is a really very great word, uh, referentially transparent, and means that whenever I will call, for example, problem, problem with some argument, let's say 11. So whenever the compiler will see that uh, there is mm, invoked a function with, with some argument, this function can be replaced by the result of this function. Yeah, so instead of uh, calling here and problem 11, I actually I can put as a compiler the result of this function, so it will be like 12, yes? The second thing is related to our print line, which is a side effect. And actually, this sort of uh, writing is even incorrect from the object-oriented point of view because 
if, for example, in that, in that line we would have some invocation to database, we are not able to replace this database with some mock, yes, and we are not able to test it. So, mm -hmm. uh, in first step, I, how I would like to, in, let's say, mm -hmm. modify this function is to move this guy, yes, uh, mm -hmm. to move uh, to argument list. So, let's, next step will be defining the problem mm -hmm. one, Yes, now I have again, uh, the print line is actually, this is a function when we look into, into definition of this guy. Yes, uh, this is actually the function, so we have an object console, and that, uh, in case when we, every time when we, let's say, we log anything, you, Usually we are using more like uh, more like some object logs, something like that, not not uh, strings. But of course it, we will simplify that guy, and we will use uh, instead of function like that. So, so here we'll have a function log, yes, and this this as we could see this was any to yeah any to unit, yeah. So, so instead of that, let me call here a string. Yeah, and again, and again, I, I will have, I can write here some string eff effect. Yes, oh, excuse me, actually, a log plus effect. And here I will have a, my body, my, that what the, that the function is, uh, let's say the main purpose of this function is increasing the uh, uh, argument which is integer one. So still there is a problem because now we do not, I we are collecting the side effect uh, inside the object. Yes, in case of string, of course it's not true because string itself is immutable, yeah, so but if we would have some log system, the log system would change its state. It means that in, even if we have exposed that state as an, uh, an argument list, uh, actually, we, actually we, are, uh, we are doing some, we, we are creating here some point of return, some point of, of some special effect. It's not trackable by us. So the simplest thing is then, Yes, to achieve that, that uh, goal, which is uh, uh, referential transparency, uh, we are using immutable objects. So there is no inner state which is modified by us. And the second thing is that actually we, yes, we expose this, this state, this change of state in our output. Yeah, so this is simplest thing we can do, yes? So instead of returning only the value, we are returning value and side effect as a pair. So this solves our problem, yeah? This is what we are going to do. The last thing here to make this uh, function fully, let's say, functional is that what we see in Haskell, or it's like this sort of languages, that every and every function, and every function I mean the number of arguments here, yes, the, the every t is uh, something which describes the number of arguments which are passed into function. So instead of using an array function, we can, we can turn every an array function into unary function in Scala, yes, mm -hmm. and we are doing it in, in this simplest way. Problem three, which is equal to Problem one. Now, so that what we have here, I mean, which is important thing. Just let me control X. Okay. We don't need this information. 
So the most important thing here now is this signature, yes? This signature will suggest us, yes, how we can turn some single value into this, into this function, yes? The string is our state, the integer is our value, and here again we have a, we have a state. So when you look at the, I know into books, how that function looks like, this is just s, which, is, which returns me the pair of a and s, yes? This is part and parcel. This is something on which we are building, which, on which we are building the state monad. Without that function, with that signature, we are not able to build the state monad. Actually, the monad is this function and applied monad, monad combiners like map and flat map. Yeah? So, so th we are in that point. So the first thing now, I see that there is some signature here, yes? So this signature allows me to create from the single value, yes, like, like A. So that what I see, let's say the line above is like something like that. So I have an A type, value type of type A, and I would like to get the, as a result that function which is getting a state and giving me back the pair A and S. Why we are doing it? So now we I can think that, okay, I have this all of this function, so let me define now some function lift, which is parameterized by N and S, and I get here an argument A. That way I want to get back is uh, S into A of S. And that implementation is really straightforward. Yes, that, that and, and really comes from the, from the core of functional thinking, yes? We are using function to create another function. Yeah, so here I will have a function which we get as uh, S of type S. Yes, and this will return me what? A pair A and S. Yeah, so when I apply this function to, let's say, 42, yes, I will get, oh, excuse me, this is, uh, you see here is a nothing, yes, in that in return type, is a nothing, so, because now compiler is not able to, compiler is not able to figure out what type is my state, so let me literally pass it string. So, yeah, n now my result is, again, let me, French. Contract. So, so this is my signature, this is signature of my function. Why we, I'm doing it, because now, when I have my, my function, this, the state, which is getting me, ba me back, A and state, I can think about how I could get rid of this function and expose it outside my body. Yeah, so here is a body of function. This is, this is the body of that function. I, first I have, uh, let's say li right now, I'm not interested in the state. I'm interested in that function, which is up applied to my I, to, to my argument. So how to do this, yes? In functional world, we have something which is called, called combiners. And the most popular uh, combiner, let's say, let's say naturally uh, accessed by us is and then, yes, you know that, or compose, which is uh, doing exactly the same but in opposite direction compose. But compose and end then is two, uh, there are, let's say, two, uh, 
I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, the, 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 they have a restriction, yes, to type. I can compose when I have uh, on one hand uh, some function a of and uh, a giving me b and b giving me c, so I can compose them with and then. But I cannot compose mm, s a of s, and I will have an a and B. So in that case, I will get a comp I will suffer with compilation error, yes? I, I cannot do this. So we have to figure out how I could comp compose it. To do this, we can define something which is called map, yeah? This map will be parameterized by three types, S, A, and B. And the first, first argument will be my function Yeah, and the second argument is my function. So my, my state function, and here my function uh, with, I would like to combine my, my guy. And that's what I'm expecting to get back is A and S. And again, an implementation is pretty straightforward because we have to create a, a function. So we have an, some S state. Oh. Not state, but S this time. And first, we need to get our value and, and new state. Which is a result of application of this state S, yes, on our function SA, so this guy. And now, then what we have to return is just application of, uh, of my a, so my value to f function, and rewrite new state, rewrite the new state. Excuse me, yes, thank you very much. You're right, absolutely. Yes, so this is, this is my function map. So I have to scroll it up a little bit. Uh, yeah. So now we can, we can prove that this one is correct. Yes, and let's say I skip to first laws with uh, tr trying to apply unit function on, on the map. I just, I just want to uh, I just want to uh, prove that map of map, oh, first maybe I will, let me define two functions. So I will have a foo, which is a function which, which gets some i, which is integer, yes, and give me back, give me back integer plus 42, this is my current age, so this is the reason why I choose this number. <laughs> and there is a bar function, we, and this time I will get the double, and I will just double and add some, okay, uh, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so I have two functions prepared. So now I would like to prove that map of map of lift. Now I have integer and string. Yes. Now it will be 42. And uh, when I combine it with foo and bar, will be exactly same but map um, of lift of in string 42. Or maybe it would be better to write it like this. So let me find the first defined left. Um, left F which is map, maybe val, right, 
right f this map lift and now so first i now i have to create a function yes yeah, so when i create a function so i i have here i of type integer and now oh, excuse me this time i can compose it like this and then and then bar yes yeah, so i have two functions I have two functions, and now I would like to check if my my left hand side is equal to my right right hand side. Uh, left f and right f are functions, actually. Or maybe I will allow compiler to solve this guy. Yeah, so okay. We can see I have here uh, this is a string which is giving me string, and there is end of the screen. Yeah, but in both in both cases we have this. This is this is that what I have on left and right. So from the type point of view, th that these two functions are the same. I mean, they, they have the same signature. So when I only call this, I can I can even check if my side effects is oh this side effects is not working yet. Uh, so. I call this function with like first empty string or maybe, I don't know, let's say that the empty string and I will have a right f, and again, empty string. So I expect that these are equal to each other. Yes, yeah, so the Boolean here is uh, the true, yes. So I can also show what is the result. Yeah, our result is Again, it's out of string. Help you. The result looks like this. Yeah, so I have a result 42.42, whatever. So so far, I understand that this is this is clear. We have we defined a map. Yes, which allows me to. With, with using the, the lift function, yeah, so we have a lift function, and together with lift function and the map, I can get rid of this function out of the body of, of my, let's say, my problem one function, and actually I can apply it to my, to my single value with map uh, uh, combiner. So, in case when we would like to manipulate also on the state, we have to define something else. And that something else uh, should allow me to combine my S A to S with function, which is getting an A and is returning me back S and B S, yes? So this is actually that what we know from, and I'm not sure if you remember something like that. I think that yes. So this is something which is applied to flat map, yes. My M of B is actually this S uh, into B and S. Let me define that F map. Again, this implementation is quite straightforward. And it's the first argument I have S into A, B. My function this time is something which is gets S, F, A and gives me S of B, S. That way I'm expecting is S into B, S. And again, here I will have a state S. And implementation is pretty similar to that what I have in map. So I have an, uh, my value A and, and new state. Yes, and this comes from application of, of S to SA. 
But this time I'm, I'm not creating a pair, I'm not creating a tuple, I just apply a, a and new state to my function f. Uh, oh really? Ah, of course here is a mistake. Yeah, so I have here a F map defined like this. Yes, and again I can prove that this is this is that what is. Uh, this is that what I, I really expect. So, yeah, from the third monadic law, I have third, third monad law. I have something like that. So I have some S A when I have a flat F map, and I have a foo and F map, and I have a G. Yes, I expect this will be the same like S A F map of some x, uh, f of x, f map of g. Yeah, so this is what I am expecting. So in case when we do not have we, uh, infix notation, we can write down as, uh, so first maybe let me rewrite my functions. I need th they, them again. So this one will be like, I don't know, like monadic, sort of. Um, I'm expecting here that I will get an S string, which, re which returns a pair. And here I have S plus full. string s plus bar and uh, my proof f map of f map of lift integer string actually I could create a some to not repeat myself a value a sa is equal to lift of in string 42 sa and here I have a N bar n. So this my is my left side. My right side is. So now I'm, I'm flattening it a little bit. So here I will have, uh, I create a function which is getting an integer. And I, I apply this integer to my, uh, to my function. But of course, before that I have to call fmap. And here I have a bar n. One and the second. Let me save it, prove that this I'm correct. Yes, I'm correct. It's all of these things are, are already somehow interpreted by compiler, no errors. And as a, in something interesting, let me show how the uh, state composition or appending, state appending is working. So I have a left, left and M. 
of effects. And I need a second argument of this function only. Yeah, so I, I know that maybe you, you are not able to read it, but the result is like this. Yeah, so, so, so as we can see, this is, this is exactly that what we are expecting. But probably you don't like this sort of writing. So we are using functions and we are calling functions, but we are accustomed to the infix notation. Yeah, we are accustomed to infix notation. So the simplest thing is to create, the, to create actually the wrapper for my function, for my S to AS function, yes? So this wrapper looks like like this, so this is a class, let's call it state. The state is parameterized by S and A. And this guy is getting my S A, S into A S. And inside that class, we can define two functions, yes, the map, which is parameterized by B. And the argument is of course, is a function which is uh, which is getting an, a giving me back b. It's, it's not too comfortable place actually. Uh, and what I expect in here is a state of course. Unfortunately, some unexpected technical problems. Now the problem is that my computer is not recognizing any device. I see only my dis my display. So the rest of it, I will send you a link to my <laughs> to my worksheet. Uh, unfortunately, uh, issue is that I, I would like to create a wrapper. You will see that the wrapper is pretty simple, and then we can move to the way how we can construct the type class with it, and I think it would be maybe better usually. But that's what I said about, you, you saw about uh, how the state is used, yes? This is part and parcel. Yeah, the first thing is when I, I create only the class, yes? Inside that, that, that what I, I try to write down is that map and flat map, or F map, will give me back the state. But actually, inside the implementation, I will use that function to create exactly that what I wrote up. Yeah? So that's what you see about the map and the fmap. That implementation is almost moved from there to that, to that class. In case of, uh, in case of uh, type classes, it's a little bit more complicated because Scala does not have really very well a uh, way of partial application of types. It, is, it, makes, uh, it makes the writing, the, especially the writing of uh, implicit class, which is responsible for wrapping type class on that, on that function you, you saw. I mean, this S into A and S, yes, is a little bit tricky. But, but I will send a link with, uh, with a place in GitHub when you could see it and I think that will be okay. So that's it. Um, how, how much more material do you have? Uh, how many more things do you want to show? No, that's it, yes. 
if we will be able to switch it on, I just, uh, I switched maybe from the living, or, or living coding into my cheat sheet, so just to give you some, some imagination about that. So state monad is compli some, something complicated, but it is easy. How you feel it? I'm not asking about where to use it, yes, because in case of languages like Java or Scala or something like that where we have also objects, it is really very hard to figure out where the state monad can be used. Actually, even if we are working on collections, we are not using um, monad as uh, something sophisticated. We are using monad in sense that we are able to uh, apply some function on elements of some in so of some structure. Yes, yeah? so we have some stru algebraic structure, some 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 data structure actually. Oh, okay, we are back. Fine. So, I do not consume your time, guys. I have prepared a cheat sheet. Oh, exactly. So here you can see the, the body of this function is really, really the same, yes? Uh, I'm, again, I'm producing a new, new function. So here I'm producing the new function. And in that function, I, I apply the S to my SA, so to my value, which is, which is wrapped by my state. Yes, and I again inv in created that pair. In case of FMAP, I'm doing exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, additionally, here is a define and apply function. This is just to get out from, the, from my wrapper. Yes, for my state wrapper, I would like to get out the result of application of the state. So this is the only difference, yes? And because of it, here are two definitions of function where I get back the state, yes? And, and in that case, I'm able then to use the infix notation. So I, I, instead of use, using nested f maps, one in another one, I can just use the, the dot and call the fmap and dot and call the fmap once again. And similarly to that, I'm, I can do the same with uh, right-hand side, yes? So I have fmap, here I create a function, and again, on the result of function, I'm calling the fmap just using a dot. So this is that, sim this is that simpler, the simpler implementation of state. The more sophisticated this type is, is uh, because uh, this is the monad, yes? We define a monad as a, this kind of trait. Yes, the trait is using just to define actually the set of function, yes, with a hint where I, on what this function I would like to apply. So I have some type generator M and some inner type A, a yes, and I define two, func two functions map and flat map with, of course, the arguments, yes? Now, I would like to apply them, so the, this class allows me to find out, to find out the function, yes? So here, here's a function, s, sorry, this is, maybe I will, I will break it, but how? Uh, maybe like this. So I want to apply, yes, my, uh, I want to apply this function, I th not, not the function, I mean, I want to apply um, or create the instances, yes, a apply this, this uh, converter to functions, you see, I have exactly the same function we are talking all, all about, yes, so S into TS. So but how to get this T, this is a little bit complicated. Uh, let's say right now, not sure if all of you want, are interested in how to construct that type because this is a lambda type and actually this is even nested lambda type. Yes, 
Why? Because actually, yes, actually the S into AS is, uh, is a function, one, yes. I have here an A, but my result is, I, I will get here a tuple, yes, of A and S. Oh, excuse me. Here is an S. A result is a tuple of A and S, yes. So, so this is the reason why I needed to use this nested lambda type in, in lambda type. But what is the result? The result is that getting this function, I can apply it, I apply them uh, in another way. I can extend that function with two methods, with, with two functions, map, two combiners actually, and f map, yeah? Just asking, just asking compiler to find out me a monad, yes? Define for that type. Define for that type. How to do this? Here is uh, my implicit state monad, which is, inst which is parameterized by two types. And I create my monad. And again, I have here the nested, uh, the, the lambda type. Yes. And again, the implementation of map and, f and f map is exactly the same what we wrote a few minutes ago. Yeah, and as a result, what I can do here, yeah, as a result, I'm not even using any kind of, uh, of wrappers. I can just call my lift function and use dot notation or infix notation to call fmap and fmap. And same is for my right hand side. So I have a lift and fmap, yes, and inside the fmap I, I just construct a function in really simi similar way. So that's it. There is no magic inside that. Any question to that? I will leave it uh, on GitHub and I send the link to that just to allow you to read it and walk through it. Uh, there is also on the web, this is uh, <laughs> self-promotion, or how to say it. Uh, you can find my movies about how to construct functor, yes, for, for the for unary function, no, uh, for nullary function, yes. We are using functor because we cannot combine nullary function with unary function. So this is pretty similar way, yes. So here I have a function which gives me a tuple, and I would like to combine it with other functions. That's it. This was understandable. Uh, I, I think that uh, maybe one thing would be like uh, th this seems like uh, I think that for many people that might seem a little bit esoteric, especially when you go into those special styles that you know it takes two, two or three lines. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking about. Can you tell, like, generally, would it be truly examples of the state in a monad that we use on a daily basis? Uh, so you would figure out, like, you know, uh, maybe uh, understand it a little bit. Because maybe you have some examples in your mind in some libraries that you typically use, and then, then we, we could say, no. like, okay, oh, that's <laughs> right? Are we using okay, this no, no. Yeah, no. So I mean, right. in when we are using object-oriented languages, Actually, you don't have to use monad. There is no need to use the monad. Uh, generally speaking, the theory of category, in my sense, how I understand them, it comes from the fact that I cannot combine, in, when I'm using strongly typed languages, I cannot combine any function with any function. So I cannot combine it in a simple way. I'm using just a compose method, compose combiner, yes, which is natural for functions. So every time I have to figure out new combiner like map, like fmap, like I'm not sure, maybe uh, there is also something which is called fault monad, yes. It's another combiner uh, used by uh, another kind of uh, monad. I don't remember which one. 
but every time you have to think about that means that probably you are creating a new or discovering new category, yeah? So in that sense. So in functional world, when, you ha when the program is just a calling, the flow of functions, the, fl uh, the flow of combined functions, yes, you have a need to think about such things like monad, monoids, all other things, yes. In case of object-oriented world, that what we have, actually, I was using some time ago, maybe, you know, let's say 10, 10, no, maybe not, seven years ago, I was using Groovy. And in Groovy, you could also combine the function with, uh, for example, you can apply the function on every element of list. I don't remember the method. Probably this is like transform. Yeah, not sure. But this transform was behaving exactly like a map. No one was calling it a functor. Yeah, even the philosophy of returning th this pointer to, to my inner state because it was modifying only the inner state and giving me the same reference. So it's not creating a new list or new collection, was using still the same collection, but I could call it in, in let's say, chain-like manner, yeah, chain-like style. No one was calling it a functor or something which, which is resemble to fa functor. So let's say from that what I see is, is not, that is understandable in case when we, for example, have some need to write some behavior like a flow of functions and we would like to write it because it better describes, let's say, the sense of that given domain, yes? Not sure what it would be. Maybe it's some workflow, something like that. So instead of, of doing some objects and co objects calling objects and you having some object composition, it is much easier than to express this, uh, yeah, express this as uh, this domain as a function flow, so I can use them. And then it is worth to know, let's say, have in the in back of, of of my mind that okay, this is exactly what I'm using, yes, and and I'm correct with it. I'm I'm I know I know what I'm doing now. So on the other hand, I could say okay, SBT is using a state monad, or state like monad, or like state monad, solution to modify the state. Yes, every time when you have a write a command, for example, in that case, you get, um, you get the, but actually it is not, not that state, yes, because in command you get two arguments usually, the state and potentially argument of command, but you, you are returning back the state. Yes, no one takes care, takes care, usually in SBT, no one takes care about the uh, return value because the philosophy in, in SBT is to work on size effect. So from some reasons, yes, from, from, from some reasons, guys decided that the size effect is, is that, is, is that part and parcel of SBT uh, philosophy. So. When I compile something, I don't give you a result of compilation. I just give you a files, compiled files, product of compilation. And if you have a need to do with them something else, you don't get them strictly from the command as a function. You have to just go to the file system, get these files, and you can process them further. Yeah, so this is the reason why not. Sorry for the very uh, wide response, verbos, <laughs> abandoned, okay. Is, is, is it was fine, no? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. And <laughs>